Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Dwarf Fortress Strategy and Tactics. So today we're going to be going over another embarkation gambit. And this one is one I actually posted to the Dwarf Fortress subreddit nine years ago. That predates my actual YouTube channel by several years. I was still doing strategy guides and named builds way back in the day before I took to YouTube. And in going over my old guide, most of it is intact. In fact, the only thing that's not intact uh, between back then and now is the name. It's unfortunately. The name of the build is called the Mmm build, which stood for Miner, Mover, Mason, and Militia. Unfortunately, the Mason skill has changed in functionality, and the thing that we want out of it is not no is no longer in the actual mason skill but is actually in the stone cutter but the mm, mm, uh, build does not have the same ring to it so what does the mm build do for us well it gives us once again it maximizes our embarkation benefits for the points that we spend but it also gives us a team of four dedicated miners who will also be our fort's early game militia so should we encounter any hostile nastiness early in the game before we've got ourselves fully established with a proper military setup we'll still be able to defend ourselves and rather quite effectively for for someone who's just a, a member of a militia so let me show you how to build it first off we uh, start with our dwarves. We, this is going to use uh, up six of our seven dwarves to execute this gambit to its fullest extent. First thing is you want to check your dwarves for their various stats. And while you can look at their traits over here, I like to go to the personality and look at their full base uh, traits up here. It's these that we're looking for. What we're looking for is someone with a, a good kinesthetic sense and or a good spatial sense. Kinesthetic being slightly more important. It has a very good sense of the position of his own body. Very good. The, the position of your own body is also known as kinesthetic sense here. So this one, Vabuk, is, is a uh, potentially good one. Yeah, it looks like Vabuk is our winner. So whoever has your best kinesthetic and or uh, spatial sense, be your, your smith. So what you want to do is you want to give them five points of weaponsmith, five points of armorsmith. And this is useful not just for executing this particular gambit, but also just for the long term of your fort. You're gonna want someone who is your dedicated smith in the longer term to make equipment and, and arms and armor for your proper military later on. Next, you want to find who is going to be your uh, woodworker. And this is gonna be a, a carpenter slash uh, wood burner. Lemul here has a good kinesthetic sense. Not quite as good as uh, Vabuk's, but that will do. You really want your top tier kinesthetic person to be your arms and armor smith. So this person, we're gonna give them five points of carpenter, give them two points of woodcutter, three points of wood burner. Next, you want to identify who your leader is going to be, someone with good social skills. So Olan here has some a good smattering of social skills, uh, incl inclination towards language, social relationships, patience. So we're gonna make them our leader. For our leader, what we're gonna want to do is go to the other tab, give them a uh, point of leader and a point of tactician, a point of organizer, point of negotiator, and a point of appraiser. The other parts of their skills, you're gonna to want to give them under combat five points of shield user. More on that later. Now we want to identify three more members of the Mmm squad. The the our our leader is also going to be one of our members of the Mmm squad. They're they're going to be the leader of it. We need three others. Their particular skills and personalities not as important. So for our other uh, individuals who are going to be part of the Mmm squad, we want to give them all five points of shield user and five points of stone cutter. This used to be the Mason skill back when the, the fourth M actually meant the M, but in the modern version of the game, it has been split into stone cutter is what we want for them. So five points into that. And we're gonna do that for all of the others. As for what to do with your last dwarf, I personally like making them a Mark's dwarf slash hunter. They're not necessarily going to be part of our militia, although they can help out in a pinch, but giving them the ability to hunt 
will certainly help and making them a good bone carver as well. On to the items. So this is probably the more important part. The Prepare Carefully likes to start you out with two copper battle axes, two copper picks. And that's all well and good. You do need picks to go mining. You need the battle axes to cut down trees. That's, it's useful, but it's also expensive. We can do so much better. So we're gonna get rid of these. We do want to keep the iron anvil. Even though that is an expensive 100 point item, you absolutely need the iron anvil for any of this to work, so keep it. Now, what you wanna do is go over to your items, go to metal bars and check to see. There are two types of metal bars that we absolutely need for this to work and one optional type that just makes it work better. We're looking for copper bars, check, and tin, check. Now the optional one, bismuth bars not bismuth bronze bars we, we do want bismuth bronze bars but we're going to make our own but if we just have pure regular bismuth bars then we're in luck so this comes down to knowing the recipe of how to make your own bronze because that's going to be the equipment that we're going to be making for our dwarves and we're just going to be embarking with the raw materials now if you do not have bismuth bars you can settle for regular bronze regular bronze is perfectly fine for this strategy to make regular bronze you just need one copper bar and one tin bar that when smelted down will convert them into two bars of bronze. Now bismuth bronze is superior for, for a couple different reasons. So let me show you. So if you have bismuth, then you're in luck. What you want to do is get one unit of bismuth, one unit of tin and two units of copper. These four together will give you four bismuth bronze bars. Now, bismuth bronze bars have two things going for them the, over regular bronze. While they are just as, as good militarily going, they're, they're just as good for combat uh, arms and armor, the bismuth bronze uses less fuel because every time you convert this set into bars, you use up one fuel and you get four bars for one fuel doing bismuth bronze and it takes, you only get two bars when doing regular um, per fuel when doing regular bronze. Secondly, they're 20% cooler. And by 20% cooler, I mean that they're, anything made out of bismuth bronze is worth 20% more than things made out of uh, regular bronze. So it's just more valuable in general, but just as effective. So if you have bismuth bronze available, go for it. Ultimately, you want the materials to make 24 units, uh, 24 bars of either bronze or bismuth bronze. So for bismuth bronze, that's six bismuth, bar, bismuth bars, six tin bars, and 12 copper bars. And for bronze itself, you're gonna want 12 copper bars and 12 tin bars. Uh, in addition to that, we want five more bars of copper on top of what the regular ratio would dictate. Now, a few other important things. We wanna go down here to stone, we want to embark with uh, a couple of units, at least 10 I usually like to do, of a fireproof stone. Uh, granite's usually pretty good. Any of the cheap 3.1s is fine. Secondly, we want to go down here to miscellaneous. We, and now, if we are embarking on a biome that has trees to cut down, uh, for fuel, you only need one unit of fuel, either coke or charcoal doesn't really matter which. If, however, you are embarking on a uh, biome that does not have trees to cut down, you're instead going to want to embark with, I'd say, at least 20 units of raw wood. That's a bit more expensive, but that's that's what you're going to need uh, for this if, you're, if you don't have uh, native uh, trees to cut down. In this embark, however, we have trees to cut down, so we're good. All right, I think we have what we need to get everything going. Of course, you can combine this uh, gambit with other embarkation gambits. I'm just focusing on the mmm build here. So let us begin. Okay, so first things first, let's get our stuff organized here. We want to set up our labors here. Go to labor. We want our four mmm squad members to be our miners. So that's going to be our anyone who's labeled as a stone cutter plus our expedition leader. And we want to make sure that everyone else does not have the mining labor. For woodcutter, it should default onto our carpenter, which is what we want. And fisher should default to our bone carver, which is also what we want. All right, first things first, we want to build three workshops. Firstly, a metalsmith, iron anvils, and make sure you use the granite, not the copper bars. Also want to build under furnaces a smelter, again, use the granite. 
We're also going to want to, under furnaces, build a wood furnace. All right, for your metalsmith's furnace, just to make sure that the game is using the right person, click on workers and have that, have it, uh, assign your metalsmith as the head dwarf for this one so the game knows not to use anybody else because otherwise that would be wasteful. Now on here, we want to add a new task, weapons and ammunition, copper, battle axe, just one. That's just, just it for now. Because we didn't embark with an axe, we need an axe in order to get started. Our one unit of fuel we embarked with allows us to turn one of our excess copper bars into a copper axe, and that will allow our woodcutter to start cutting wood. One of the other benefits to making our equipment on site is that we have the chance of um, getting superior equipment. Here we can see this is a finely crafted copper axe. That's what these little pluses on either side uh, indicate. If we just bought a uh, copper axe from, from Embark, it's always going to be of the lowest quality. So now we want to uh, mark a couple of trees here for uh, to be cut down. Our woodcutter should do that. As soon as the first couple of logs hit the floor here, we're going to want to uh, set our wood furnace to make charcoal repeat. And actually we don't need all of those. Well, because our, our wood burner is also our, our uh, wood cutter here. That works too. And then for our workers, let's make sure that our wood burner is the one who's using it. So with this, um, what our wood burner is going to do is it's going to take the logs that we have here and turn them into charcoal. Charcoal is going to be the additional fuel we need for the rest of our stuff. Now, the next things that we're going to make uh, in this order is we're going to be doing four more units of copper, but we're gonna make four copper picks. We haven't even gotten into our bismuth bronze yet, but we want four copper picks. And make sure they finish all, making all four. They might run short if they, if they run short on, on fuel, but then just reassign them if they cancel the job. Just keep your eye out, out for a task over here. Now, while they're making these copper picks, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and designate you know, the, the initial dig out of your fort. Now this particular video is not gonna be covering in scope, you know, the best ways and shapes and styles to dig out your fort. But what's important here is you want to, you want your mm, squad to get to work and start digging your fort out here. And not just digging down, but also digging out. This is, serves two purposes. One, you can get started with, you know, getting your, your stuff that, uh, that's on your wagon underground, but also this allows your mm, squad to start training their mining skill, which is extremely important. So as the picks get made, our, uh, our miners will continue, you know, just grab a pick and do it. And, and with four miners going, you're gonna be able to get a lot of stuff done. And yeah, there's our fourth copper pick here. They're grabbing it, down they go, excellent. Now, now what you want to do is you want to go to your smelter and we want to make bismuth bronze bars, or if you were just doing regular bronze, do make bronze bars on repeat. They're going to take all of the raw materials and convert all of it into the alloy of either bronze or bismuth bronze. The reason why you want to make sure that your miners are extremely busy at this point is twofold. One, obviously we want to get our fort established, but there's a second hidden reason. The reason why these four, these the, the mm squad here is going to be an effective militia is because of the mining skill. They all started out with no mining skill. You might be saying, well, if they were gonna be doing so much mining, why, why didn't you start them with mining uh, skill points? And my answer to that is that they, the mining skill trains up quickly, as long as they're constantly digging, which they are. They're already up to a novice here, but they'll be uh, getting more mining skill as they go along. And the mining skill is unique in that when they are wielding a pick, as a weapon, it uses the mining skill rather than a weapon skill uh, to determine how well they fight with that. And because mining can train up so quickly, this mining training that they're doing, it doubles as essentially military training. Now, as your bismuth bronze bars get cooking here, we want to start making their real weapons and arms. So we're going to start out with four either bronze or bismuth bronze picks. 
Now you might be saying, well, Pinstar, they're already using picks. Why didn't you just make the bismuth bronze picks in the first place? Why'd you bother with copper picks? And that actually stand, that, that uh, plays to a, uh, a longstanding bug in the game. Not, this has nothing to do with the Steam version. This has been around you know, since the olden days, where the mining task reserves a pick for as as the equipment being used for mining so you can't really use the same pick for mining as you do for fighting but because it, it plays off of the mining skill we want their weapons to be picks that's why we're not that's why since we're, even though we're making them whole new sets of equipment we're not making them traditional weapons because they we don't want them training in traditional weapons they're going to be training in the pick so that's going to be their weapon we also have a uh, fairly extensive set of armor to make them as well starting off with bismuth bronze helms four of them all of these are going to be four of each one other thing you may want to do is pick out a uh, one of the rooms you've dug out and make that the location of your barracks here for this for the mm squad. I'm going to start a stockpile down here, and we're going to set up. Uh, we we want it fairly large here, like that. Here we are going to do weapons picks, and then for armor, well, basically everything here, just to just for speed's sake here. So as we make our weapons and armor and whatnot, they'll get delivered down here. The other thing you're going to want to do is click on the Nobles and Administrators menu, Militia Commander, Assign, and give it to your Expedition Leader. This will allow you to add a barracks to this whole room here. One other thing you're going to want to build at some point is a Workshop Carpenter. Make sure you assign your skilled Carpenter to this one. And we can unassign our them as a wood burner, just so that, you know, because we want them more as the carpenter, if there are carpentry tasks to be done. And we want them to make four shields. Shields are actually perfectly fine, and the material does not quite matter as much as metal armor does. So we're not bothering to do bismuth bronze for our shields, and these will still be effective, and we want four of them. All right, they're still working through their stuff here. In addition to the picks and the helms, we want four bronze or bismuth bronze male shirts. After those shirts, you want to add four bismuth bronze greaves. I'm sorry, not greaves, gauntlets, not greaves. Make sure it's gauntlets, four of those. After the gauntlets are made, you want to make yourself a uh, four bronze or bismuth bronze high boots. Okay, we have all of our equipment made. Now it's time to form the squad. So have, having assigned that, we do create new squad. We start with no uniform because we're going to make our own uniform. You can give them name here. But what you want to do is select the thing. Now, the your militia leader is going to be the first member. Sign position two, you want your other stone cutters here. So you and you and you. So this is going to be a squad of four. Now we click here to check mark it. Equip. Add uniform. We're going to call this the mm, uniform. New weapon. Go down here. Picks. Material. Bismuth bronze. Or bronze if that's what you happen to be making. New shield. Shield. You don't have to define the material because who knows what it might be made from several different types of wood. Doesn't really matter the wood. New footwear. High boots. New handwear. Gauntlets. New headwear. Helms. New bodywear. Mail shirts. We, uh, we do not have leggings and for two reasons. Uh, one, that would require more materials, but two, that would be, um, that would basically be the, the uh, straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, encumbrance becomes a problem for untrained soldiers. So by, by not going, by foregoing the, the uh, leggings, we're giving up a little bit of product protection, but allowing them to fight unencumbered despite all this. So they can still do their thing and go about their days and be militiamen. Uh, proper military who are trained in armor use can uh, can better handle the heavier weights. But for now, this is what we're going to be doing. Confirm and save uniform. Assign uniform. Mm. That basically gives everybody a heads up as to what equipment they need to be using when it's time for them to do their militia thing. And now we can see it all turn yellow. That means they've identified... If, if you did all the pre previous steps right, 
and made all the equipment for them, they have now secured all their stuff. You do want to make sure you define the bismuth bronze picks so that you make sure that they use the better material for the picks. Now you have your militia. Now, at the moment, you don't need to do anything. You do, do not, do not put them on training or anything like that. Their training is more digging. That's their training. Uh, so they can just keep on digging and smoothing uh, for you. That's the other, that's the other thing. Uh, the whole stone cutter thing, they're, they're good at smoothing. That is their whole purpose here. Obviously you wanna smooth rocks at the bottom here. And then if a threat comes along, then you hit the sword and click on your threat. Let's see if there's anything on here we can demonstrate on. A king snake. Attack the king snake. So now by selecting that and confirming it, they will go down and fetch their equipment, their arms and armor, and then come out to do battle against the, the wretched threat to the fort. Let's go to the combat log here. The king snake strikes at the recruit. The shot is blocked with the peach wood shield. That's why we give them shields and the shield use ability. The recruit scratches the king snake in the nose, tearing apart the scale. The force pulls the head, tearing apart the fat. So he basically hooks the the he hooked the the uh, pick into its nostril. The recruit strikes the king snake in the tail with her bismuth bronze pick, tearing apart the scale. The recruit charges the king snake, collides. The king snake is knocked backwards. The recruit strikes the king snake in the head with her bismuth bronze pick, and the severed part sails off in an arc. That's picks for you. Darn deadly things. They just went and knocked it over and then chopped its head off. And that is why this is a scarily effective early militia that does not necessarily need to be on 24-7 military duty. So I hope you found the mm, Embark uh, useful and helpful. Um, this should help keep your fort safe and also uh, keep everything productive and keep those tunnels and rooms digging all at the same time. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, I'm Spin Pinstar, signing out. See ya!